Hey everybody, so today what we're doing is we're gonna resurface this front patio. It's five feet by 29 feet. We're gonna put our concrete waterproofing coating over it so it's a colored tinted acrylic coating. First thing I gotta do, you take a look at it. It's in pretty good shape actually. It's got a couple little hairline cracks. I'm gonna end up fixing another one right there. But the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna buzz it with my diamonds. I got my metal, my metal diamonds right here. I'll put them on the bottom of my buffer. And then I'll hit it with my ceramic pucks. Those are 50 grits. Just to get off any old, soft surface concrete. Get it down to some really good stuff. Smooth it out a little bit. And, you know, then clean it. Fix the cracks. And then I can go right over it with the coating. So, we're going to get to work getting this prepped. And then I'll talk to you about what we're going to use for a coating here in a little while. <laughs> So what I'm looking to do here is for me where I'm working on a job, I like to be able to complete it in a day if I can. So I like to grind my concrete to prep it, keep it dry. Um, and what I'm looking for when I'm grinding is I'm just removing the, the top right like 16th of an inch on the surface. If that concrete is soft on top, you know, I want to get rid of it, which this was. You can see all the dust that's making with not much effort. So I'm getting the concrete back down to really good hard concrete, which is going to be a good base for the acrylic coating I'm putting on. And then, I mean, I could pressure wash this if you don't have access to a buffer or, or a grinder or something. You could pressure wash it to prep it and get off, you know, the dirt, the mold, and the mildew. Just if you get it wet like that, you got to let it dry out for at least 24 hours before you put any type of coating on it. So for me, you know, it, it just doesn't make sense to do that when I have the equipment to do it this way and I can get the whole job done in one day. So that's why I typically like to grind all the concrete when I prep it for some type of coating. And you can see all the dust that's making. It's, uh, it's really taking off that top layer and it's gonna, this is gonna make for a really good long lasting coating because it's gonna bond really, really well to this base now. So I'm gonna get this cleaned up and then I'm gonna start patching the cracks. going pretty good that thing's taking off quite a bit of the soft surface getting it a little bit smoother so it's not taking like all the texture off but it's taking some of it off so should be easier to put the coating on number one and then it should be easier to keep clean down the road so I just got a little bit more to do here let's buzz this piece The size of this is about, it's about 28 feet long and not quite 5 feet wide. I think it was like 4 foot 8 wide. And it took me probably 15 to 20 minutes to grind the whole thing using the buffer this way. So it really doesn't take too long to get it prepped, you know, between grinding it, vacuuming it. And then I did take a leaf blower to it too to get off any residual dust that the vacuum didn't get. You know, I probably had 45 minutes in the prep. And now what I'm doing is I'm going to fix these cracks. I use a really fast setting two-pot polyurea uh, crack repair material. I'll have a link for that down in the description if you guys want to check it out. Um, and again, it's because I want to try to finish this in a day. I don't want to patch that with something. i got to wait 12 hours for it to cure so I can come back the next day and grind it. I want to be able to grind it in. You know 20 minutes or 30 minutes so I only mix uh, eight ounces at a time it's part A and part B I mix four ounces of one four ounces of another and then I mixed a little bit of uh, thickening agent with it just so the the liquidy type repair material wouldn't sink way down into the cracks and that's basically what I do I just dump it on and I smooth it out a little bit with a putty knife and then that's it, I leave it, because I know I'm going to grind it. As soon as it gets hard, I'm going to grind it smooth and flush, so I don't have to be too crazy fussy with, 
you know, if it's a little bit high or if it's a little bit messy, I'm going to grind it all off anyway. And then what will stay is the stuff that's in the cracks or in the spalling, little pop-outs. All that stuff will stay down in there, and it'll, it'll be flush just like it was originally. The key with this stuff is just moving fast because it will set up quick, especially on a hot day. I mean, you'll literally only have minutes to work with it and get it out of the bucket, so you got to know what you're doing. Sometimes we'll also use Bondo for stuff like this. You can use Bondo to patch concrete. Um, I've got I've got trainings on how to do stuff like that, how to repair concrete, how to pour concrete, and all kinds of stuff in the concrete underground. So if you want to check that out, there's a link for that down below. Um, it's how to do slabs, how to do stamp concrete, but there's some concrete repair in it too like this. So um, if you want to learn how to do that, that's the place to go. All right, so to fix those cracks and a couple little divots, we're using our two-part fast setting polyurea. You can see how fast that stuff sets up. It's already hard in the bucket. Sets up in just minutes, and that's going to allow me to grind that smooth here in a couple minutes. And I can just keep going with my process so it's not going to slow me down to have to patch anything or fix anything. And once I get that ground, I'll just I'll touch up any little spots I think are a little rough. With the, with the hand grinder, clean it again, and then I'm just about ready to stop putting the coating on. So as soon as I get set up, we'll be right back here in a minute. All right, you can see those cracks kind of disappeared with the two-part fast siding polyurea. Cracks disappeared. All patch ready to go. Patch some of the divots and pop-outs. Just gonna blow this off with a leaf blower. Get my get my uh, concrete waterproof coating ready to go. So we'll be back in a minute. So what we're using for our acrylic waterproof concrete deck coating is MIP, Mape Coat Deck T from Mapai. I've used this before. I've had it on some other videos. You can check it out right here. This is colored. It's tinted. It has like a slight color of tan to it. So you can order this pre-tinted and it'll just be shipped to you, with, you know, whatever color you pick. And then, you know, basically do the prep like I did or you could just pressure wash, let it sit for a day and then come back and put the coating on. I'm gonna put two coats on today. That's typically pretty normal. The where I get it is New Jersey Decorative Concrete, and I'll leave a link for that down in the description so you guys can check that out. I usually just call them and you know tell them what I want, what color I want, and then they can just ship, uh, call Mapai, Mapai makes it right there, then they ship it right to your house. So. I'm going to get going. I'm going to cut in all my edges first. You've got quite a bit of working time with this stuff. I'll get all my edges cut in, then I'll come back and I'll roll it out with the 18 inch. So this is a one part acrylic waterproofing concrete deck coating. Uh, you can use it on wood too, but uh, I've only used it on concrete. And I do take a drill and a mixing paddle to it first before I start using it, just to make sure everything's mixed really, really well. And I like to shoot for, for the first coat, you know, I'm shooting for about 100 to 120 square feet a gallon. And that's, just, that's pretty accurate every time I've used it. And then for the second coat, I can usually get about 150 to 200 square feet a gallon. So if you're figuring, 
you know how much you need that's what i figure and uh like i said it if you're in the shade if you're in the shade is no problem at all with just you know cutting in all your edges being by yourself you got plenty of time to work with it if you're in the sun you got to work a little bit faster um, i mean not really as far as rolling it out or stuff like that but you just want to keep the bucket out of the sun keep that in the shade and just keep moving you know don't stop or the the edges of your roller panel will start to dry up a little bit but it basically works the same as paint you know but it's just a lot more durable than a typical concrete paint at least in my experience it is we've used it on a lot of pool decks as you'll see i'll link some of the pool deck videos I've done with it you know in the description but you can see how easy it rolls on um, I, I like to use a three quarter inch nap roller when I'm using it the hardware store today only had a half inch nap so I mean that will work but the three quarter inch nap tends to hold a little bit more material you can go a little bit further in between you know putting paint on the roller nap itself it just goes a little bit faster with a thicker nap but you can see it goes on pretty good and then it's going to dry pretty fast you can see it's drying right behind me all right so there's the first coat it looks pretty good we'll give that time to dry up and we'll put a second coat on you can see you can kind of see how some of it's drying up already when it kind of dulls out versus the shiny stuff right here it's drying right up so i don't know probably half an hour we should be able to put the second coat on We'll give it time to cure up really good so it's in the shade so it's not going to dry quite as fast as if it was in the sun but it's still pretty fast drying you can usually get two coats on within an hour so we'll be back as soon as that dries all right so it's been about an hour the uh, first coat's all cured up good i can get back on it get this second coat on and it's going to look really really good after this second coat it actually looks really good after the first coat but so let's get going. We'll just do pieces at a time. Try to get you the best shot I can. Kind of going, kind of in the shade and in the sun a little bit. So hard to see, but we'll start right there. So let me know what you guys are thinking so far. How do you think it's looked compared to what it looked like when we first started? You remember how moldy and dirty and ugly looking the concrete was and now just after one coat at least it's evened it out and then what you'll see here at the end after two coats i mean it's really going to look like new again and that's really the key with this stuff you know to make old concrete look like new again if uh, rather than rather than you know busting it out and redoing it obviously you wouldn't do that on something like this but if you have to fix some concrete that has quite a bit of repair in it and you want to you know not look like it's been repaired clean up the patches and you can go over it with two coats of this stuff and it's going to at least all look the same color make it all look the same texture um, and that's another thing this thing this stuff does have a little bit of texture to it it's like it has a tiny little bit of grit in it so it's kind of skid proof anti-slip type coating and it works really good for, as far as that goes for when you might have wet areas. I don't typically recommend driving on it, so I wouldn't really recommend it for a driveway or a garage floor. Although they, I, I believe they say you can use it for, for garage floors or driveways. I haven't personally done that. So I know the hot tires on a car when you come in, drive in with hot tires and, you know, whether you move the tires back and forth or whatever, those, those can really peel off even some uh, cheaper epoxy coatings. So I probably wouldn't recommend putting this in your garage or on a driveway if you were thinking of that. But definitely any, just about anywhere else, you know, as far as patios, pool decks, sidewalks, walkways, balconies, you know, anything like that, it should work great for. So I want you guys to let me know down in the comments what you think. If you think you'd like to try something like this, if you've got any questions, ask them down in the comments. Uh, if you want to learn more about how to do concrete stuff, coatings, epoxies, and stuff like that, check out the Concrete Underground. I'll be in there helping you out. All right, that's it. Second coat. Looks good. Looks like brand new concrete. No stains, no mildew, no old looking, just dreary, ugly looking concrete. 
that looks brand new two coats this stuff this stuff wears really really good too especially with foot traffic so that's going to make them a nice clean looking brand new looking concrete patio Again, we're using Mapai's Mape Coat Deck T acrylic deck coating, waterproof deck coating. So that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. <laughs>